Hello class, my name is Thompson. I'm a trainer at Louvavu Technical College Tivet, and today we are going to learn together the module which is called Repair Radio Receiver. And today's topic, we are going to see how to prepare a radio receiver and repair radio receiver power supply. At the end of this session, each runner will be able to select and arrange different tools, materials, and equipment required while repairing a radio receiver. He, she will be able to differentiate and to troubleshoot different parts of a radio receiver power supply. As we are learning together, I invite you to take some note and do a practical exercise as we are learning together. Firstly, you may ask yourself, what is a radio receiver? A radio receiver is an electronic device that receives radio waves and converts the information carried by them to a usable form. It is used with an antenna, and an antenna intercepts radio waves, electromagnetic waves, and convert them to thin alternative current, which are applied to the receiver, and the receiver extracts the desired information and use electronic filter to remove all unwanted signal, and the electronic amplifier increase the power gain of the signal for further processing, and finally recover the desired information through demoderation. As you already know, demoderation is the extraction of original information from the carry wave. As we already finished to discuss about a radio receiver, now on, we are going to prepare the workplace accordingly in order to repair a radio receiver. As a professional technician, firstly, what you have to do, you have to protect you against any hazard while you are doing any kind of repairing. So it means you have to select PPE, which are personal protective equipment, such as gloves, helmet, overall, googles, and so on. After you finish to select PPE, now you are going to select tools, materials, and equipment required for radio receiver repairing. There is a universal screwdriver which is used to do assembling and disassembling. There is a fat screwdriver which is used according to the shape of the screw. There is an iron key. There is a cutting pliers. There is a blower. It's used for cleaning while you finish to repair. There is a soldering iron. There is a desoldering pump. There is a digital multimeter, as you can see. There is a cleaning solution. There is a soldering station. There is a magnifying glass which is used to zoom in. As we finish to see tools, materials, and equipment required for radio receiver repairing, now we are going to see the main part of a radio receiver. Firstly, we have to remind ourselves what is assembling and disassembling. Assembling a radio receiver is a process to fix together separated pieces in order to form one wall. While disassembling, is to break down or to separate one device into many pieces. Now we are going to see the main part of a radio receiver. We start by the external part. This one is called a cover. It's used to protect the internal component of this radio receiver. And this one, as you can see, is a volume control, which is used to adjust the volume. There is a channel selector which is used while you want to select any kind of channel. There is an antenna which is used to receive the electromagnetic signal which is required by the receiver of this radio to perform properly. There is a power inlet, as you can see. It's used to supply AC current from our home socket 
which is used by the internal component of this radio receiver. There is also an audio and video inlet and outlet system, such as, as you can see, a USB port, SD card slot, and the audio jack. And finally, there is a quarizer, which is used to equalize the required signal through the output. Now on, we finish to see the main external part of our radio receiver. By the use of our universal screwdrivers, we are going to disassembling this radio receiver in order to reach the internal component. Firstly, as you can see, the internal component of our radio receiver has three main parts. There is a DC power supply, which is used to convert alternative current, which came from our home socket or our wall socket, into direct current, which is required by the internal component of this radio receiver to work properly. There is an amplifier which is used to increase the power gain of the signal received by the antenna. And finally, there is a tuner which is used to select the required channel. Those are the main three internal parts of a radio receiver. And now on, we are going to see how to repair a radio receiver DC power supply. Firstly, you have to know the main part of a DC power supply of a radio receiver. Now, as you can see, the main part of our radio receiver, there is this transformer which is used to step down our AC current into direct current. There's also, as you can see, this IC is a rectification IC. A rectifier IC is used to change alternative current AC into direct current DC, it's the same as diode bridge. As you can see, after that, there is a filter, this capacitor, and finally a regulator, which is used to regulate the required output to the wall circuit. Those are the main four parts of a DC power supply of a radio receiver. And now, we are going to see the general fault which occur in radio receiver power supply. The general fault in which occur in the radio receiver power supply is when one of the main parts of a radio receiver power supply is blown up. Suppose, for example, when there is blown up fuse, blown up rectifier, blown up transformer, blown up regulator, blown up main capacitor, those are the main general fault which occur in radio receiver power supply. When the transformer is blown up, as you already know that it's used to step down, in that way there's no current flow through our power supply. When one of the diode which made the bridge rectifier is blown up, it's the same thing, there's no current may flow through the whole power supply circuit. And also, when the filter or the main capacitor is blown up, which is used to, for filtering in order to remove AC signal remain while rectification is going on. In that way, there is no output to the regulator which is required because of blown up of a main capacitor. And now we are going to see how to replace defected component of a radio receiver accordingly. Firstly, what you have to do is to do what is called soldering and soldering different parts of a radio receiver power supply. As you can see at your own screen, and finally, we have to do what is called replacement of defected component according to corresponding component. When you finish to replace defected component, what you have to do is conduct after repair testing in order to make sure that the task to repair the power supply of a radio receiver is accomplished. Firstly, what you have to do is a voltage measurement at different stage of radio receiver power supply. As you can see, you do a voltage measurement at the main capacitor, voltage measurement at rectifier, voltage measurement at chopper transformer, and so on. As we done by conducting after repair test, now what we have to do is to do what is called assembling, which is, as I told you before, is to fix together separated pieces in order to form one wall. Thank you for your attention. In our next session, we will see 
how to repair a radio receiver amplifier. As we were running together, I hope you took some note and you keep doing practical exercise with me as we were learning together. See you next time. Enjoy. <laughs>